Hello friends, welcome to your channel Phylab. Learn, analyze and build physics concept. Channel dedicated for understanding physics at plus two level. Thanks to all of you for browsing into this channel. Kindly subscribe to this channel if you haven't done up till now. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video or solution from Newton Physics textbooks. Okay friends, today uh, I am here to discuss with you a problem of unbalanced wheat stone bridge. Now this is a very common problem that you get at plus 2 level or in any competitive examinations and mostly uh, the children try to solve it with the help of Kirchhoff's law and when you are solving with the help of Kirchhoff's law the mathematics becomes little, little tricky because you land up with three different uh, currents and three different uh, equations and that becomes a little, little tricky to solve uh, and that leads to a mathematical complicacy. What we do, we connect a known voltage, let's say, of 100 volt across the other diagonal AB. So, this you can see I have connected a known voltage of 100 volt. And now, I send the current from this battery to this network of resistance. Let's say the current I flows through the point A. Now at this node 1, the current I is going to get divided into two parts. One part current, let's say I1 flows in the branch 1, 2. This branch, can you see? This branch 1, 2, let me call it as. And the current I1 flows in this branch. And then the current I2 flows in the branch 1, 4. So in this branch, current I2 flows. Now, from the end B, I will again get the current I. The current has to come out. The entering current and the leaving current must be the same. So the current entering from the end A as the current entering from the end A is I. And what is I? I is equals to I1 plus I2. So the current leaving from the end B. So the current leaving from end B must also be must be I. And that has to be I1 plus I2. So the, at this end when the current is going to leave this has to be i and this is also going to be i1 plus i2 now see here the current i enters here the current i2 enters if the current i1 moves from this branch if the current i1 moves from this branch that means no current flows in this branch isn't it similarly if the current i2 comes from this branch and it goes from this branch then no current flows in this branch and that cannot be the possibility the current flowing from this branch if it is i1 here there is some other resistance the current i1 cannot continue to flow so and here if this, there is a current i2 the same current i2 cannot flow because there is some resistance over here and this resistance is not equal to this one so what happens i need i1 plus i2 in this branch and i1 cannot flow so the current flowing in this branch has to be i2 and the current flowing in this branch has to be i1 this is what is known as symmetry distribution of current now as I have applied a voltage of 100 volt over here, so let's say the voltage across node 1 happens to be 100 volt, while the node uh, voltage across the node 3 happens to be 0 volt. And let me consider the voltage at the node 2 be x volt. So the voltage at the node 2 is x, the voltage at the node 1 is 100, the voltage at the node, B, uh, node 3 is 0, whereas the voltage at the node 4 I have yet to find out. Now, <clears throat> the current that that flows across the branch 2, 3 is I2. Now, that means, and the potential difference across the branch 2, 3 is x minus 0 volts. So, I can say I2 is equals to, the potential difference is 2 minus, uh, sorry, x minus 0 upon the resistance 5 ohm. Why? Because we all know V is equals to IR. That's what is the Ohm's law. So, <clears throat> I is equals to V by R. The potential difference across this is X minus 0. This is the potential difference. X minus 0. And the resistance is 5. So the current flowing will be X minus 0 upon 5. Now, similarly, across the branch I4, 
this is the across branch 2 3 now I'm talking about about branch 1 4 now the potential difference across the branch 1 4 is also going to be equal to b x y because the same current flows across the same resistance here the potential difference was x the current was i2 the resistance was 5 ohm here the potential difference has to be x y because the same current i2 is flowing through 5 ohm resistors so the potential difference across branch 1 4 has to be across 1 4 has to be equal to x now potential that is v1 minus v4 must be equals to x now v1 is already at 100 i do not know the potential of v4 let me take it as minus uh, simply as v4 is equals to x therefore v4 must be equals to 100 minus x so that's how i get the potential difference of point or node v4 Achha, one more question that can arise in your mind why i have taken v1 minus v4 equals to x and not v4 minus v1 equals to x the reason is very simple beta the current is flowing from 1 to 4 so point 1 will be at a higher potential in comparison to point 4 so that's the reason why v1 minus v4 was taken to be equal to x now knowing all these things uh, knowing all the voltages in fact at all the nodes what i can do now i can apply the kirchhoff's uh, current law so i'm going to applying kirchhoff's current law at node 2 so at this node at this node let's see the current i1 is entering over here current i2 is going in this branch and let me say the current i3 flows out also from this branch so i1 in this branch i2 in this branch and i3 in this branch and what does the Kirchhoff's current law says the current entering at the node must be equal to current leaving the other node so current entering must be equal to the current leaving. What is the current entering at the node? That is I1. And how much current leaves at the other node? That is plus, uh, sorry, equals to, this is the current entering and this must be equals to I2 plus I3. If you are not aware of Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law, you can always watch my video given in the description link, Kirchhoff's laws and how to use them and that will be much more useful to all of you. Now, what is the current entering at node, at node 2? This is the I1. And what is I1? 100 minus x upon the resistance happens to be 10 must be equal to current in this branch 2 3 i2 and that is x minus 0 upon the resistance that is 5 and what is the current in the branch 2 4 that is i3 and what is i3 that is going to be x minus 100 minus x that's the potential difference upon the resistance of this branch that is 5 now solving for x so for solving for x as i told you i solve these steps are over here and we get the x equals to 300 by 7 volt now knowing x i can very easily find i2 now i2 was equal to x by 5 so x is 300 by 7 divided by 5 so that comes out to be i2 comes out to be 60 by 7 ampere now look at the i1 uh, i1 happens to be this is the current in the flowing in the branch i1 so i1 happens to be potential difference is 100 minus x upon 10 so that comes out to be on solving so on solving for i1 that was 100 minus x upon 10 i get i1 as equals to 40 by 7 ampere now since my job is to determine the equivalent resistance across this so if you look r equivalent will be the entire voltage that is connected v upon i what is v v was 100 and what is i that is i1 plus i2 so 100 upon what is i1 that is 40 by 7 and what is i2 that is 60 by 7 so it becomes 100 into 7 upon 40 by 7 plus 60 by 7 was 100 so 100 100 goes out so r equivalent comes out to be 7 ohm so if you know or if you can master this technique this will in fact help you to solve such type of problems 
uh, which are often referred as unbalanced wheat stone fish problem thank you guys hoping guys you all must have enjoyed learning with this video please share this video with your friends and classmates and add in your comments which topics you want me to do for you or any specific numerical problems you want me to solve for you thank you and enjoy learning